first into the Shark Tank tonight are two gym owners who believe they've worked out the perfect workout product. The last nine months have been pretty crazy. We started off just selling you know, a few packets a week to friends and family, and now there's orders coming all around Australia. G'day Sharks, I'm Raf. And I'm Rory. And we are Peak Chocolate. And we're here today to give you guys the opportunity to invest $50,000 for 10% of our company. Our product, Peak Chocolate, is something the health and fitness market has never seen before. It is 80% cacao, dark chocolate, infused with a special formulation of supplements and caffeine. We provide a new alternative to morning coffees and energy drinks. We're looking to take advantage of three booming markets at the moment. Dark chocolate, coffee, and sports supplements. As successful gym owners and athletes, we've used our contacts in the industry and our names to get this product out in the market. But it's not just a new product. We've created a new category entirely. High performance, dark chocolate. Raph and I compete in the sport of CrossFit. And as athletes, we were sick of mixing multiple powders into our shaker bottles and constantly running to the coffee shop. We then discovered some research on dark chocolate and its ability to enhance mental and physical performance. It was delicious, satisfying, and caused the release of the happy hormone known as dopamine. It was the perfect performance boosting snack. We used to have a bag of supplements to the gym, and now we just have a packet of peak. And we're gonna share our peak with you sharks to try today. Great. Did my last again. Oh. I've never been delivered mine first ever. We've done research, you're no, the least but... liked. Dreadful. Thank you very much, Ref. Better. Nice packaging, I like that. Thank you, yeah. Thanks, Ref. That's $50,000 for 10%, valuing your company at 500000 Yep. So what's your background? Uh, Raf and I went to school together. We basically got straight into health and fitness after school. We've been on personal training and fitness training for the last uh, almost eight years now. We got into CrossFit gyms, so we opened one. We now have three. We've had three gyms for essentially three years. So if I'm about to have a workout, how much of this should I eat now? If you're used to drinking quite a lot of coffee, the recommended serving size of two rectangles is going to do just right Two rectangles. You'd love this, Janine. It's crammed full of chemicals. Leukeen, isoline, violine all the lines, amino acids. They're actually some of the really beneficial brown chain amino acids. Some of the really Sorry. beneficial chemicals. Sorry, he, he They're just... some of the really beneficial chemicals. You're all. Yeah. I have to tell you, it tastes pretty good, though. It's now a good there's... chocolate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and in terms of all the supplements that we use, a company called True Protein that already sponsored Rory as an athlete because he's in the top 10 fittest men in Australia. And they top do... Top 10 most fittest guys in Australia. Yep. H how, explain that. So the title that CrossFit uses when their athletes do particularly well in the sport is they basically call them the fittest. So uh, what Raf means when he says that is that uh, in previous years I've finished in the top 10 in the basically CrossFit category in Australia. Can you just give us a couple of, couple of pull-ups? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Let's see, there's one. Oh my God, how easy Two, is that? Three. Four, <laughs> five, better give me ten. Six, Four, seven, seven, eight, nine. Look, he's smiling when he ten. does it. Well, like, I can hold this a little bit longer for you guys. <laughs> okay, that's that's a walk in the park. That's yeah. impressive. Here Come we on. go. Who's up, who's up for a bit? I'll, I'll have a bit of chocolate first. Here we go. Yeah, okay, here we go. Let's see it. Okay. Oh, don't, don't get it so professional. Oh, oh, good. That's not bad. One, he's going for ten. Two. Three. Just make sure we get full okay, lock out at the bottom, enough, full lock out. Oh, oh, four, that's enough. Oh, great job. Oh, Hang on, he's got... Oh, no, 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 no. Five. Oh. That's enough, mate. I'm worrying about well, something. Well done, Stevie. I didn't know you had that in you. So I'm guessing before the chocolate, your max pull-up was like one or maybe two, and you just hit five. So you're pre-revenue now? You don't have any customers yet? Oh, no. We've been live for nine months, and we've had $65,000 in sales and over 1,000 customers, and we have about 50 retailers of the product already. Have you got advice on packaging? It says here, engineered to accelerate muscle growth and increase in energy levels. Have you had um, legal advice on yeah. that? Well, I'm actually uh, two subjects away from finishing my law degree. Oh, mate. <laughs> You're not quite a bush lawyer. That's awesome. 
To say engineering to accelerate muscle growth, have you got clinical trials to prove that? Sorry, can you say that Clinical again? trials, mm. have you got clinical proof? Clinical trials? Well, yeah, so dark chocolate, one of the reasons... No, 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 mm. about that product, mm. have you proof? You need to finish your law degree because you are screwing up big time here and sometimes a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. So have you got proof that this does what it says it's going to do? To answer your question, we do not have proof for the synergistic effect of the chocolate and the supplements together. You've said here scientifically proven supplements. What science has proven this is true? What we're referring to with the packet is basically that the three supplements, the caffeine, the creatine and the branched chain amino acids, are three of the most heavily researched misleading. supplements in the market. That is misleading. The moment you're making health claims that aren't proven, mm -hmm. which means it's against the law. So I would seriously think about repackaging because there's a number of things on here that are just simply against the food standards codes. You need to get good legal advice, maybe someone who's finished their course, to actually do it because <laughs> this is actually quite scary. Hey, um, look, uh, Raf from Rory. That's the difference between people who read something on Wikipedia and sell billions of smoothies. I don't know her background, but I'm just guessing that she might have faced a regulator or two and probably copped a lot of uh, regulatory advice Definitely. along the way. So you need to listen to that advice. Please take a look at everything that's been highlighted here. But look, good luck and uh, I'm out. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks. How come a law student has gone into a gym which is now into chocolate? We're moving on from gym, so we um, have to move into peak chocolate because uh, we love supplements, we love everything about it. Oh, so you're selling your gyms? No, we're not. Um, I but you said just... you're moving on from them. Yeah, just with our focus. So, oh, so, <laughs> the, so what's going to happen to the poor gyms <laughs> when your focus comes over here? Well, we've actually got a really good managing and coaching staff now. We've been operating the gyms for about three years. Has so... that manager got equity? Sorry? No, no, they don't. No, they so don't. what happens when they leave? Well, that's the really good thing about having three gyms, is we essentially have three managers. So any manager at the various gyms is capable of picking up the slack. Don't you love businesses gym. that run Rory, themselves? Rory, good answer. It's she, a crap answer. It doesn't answer. like you multitasking. The fact you came up with an idea and now you're pursuing it, supported by the fact you've got a good cash flow coming out of your gym. Raf and Rory, I uh, applaud your ingenuity. Great job on running some gyms and showing that you can sort of manage a business. But for me, you're just too early. On this one, I'm out. Yeah, thanks. The fact that you guys are positioned in the fitness market, I have no doubt you're going to sell a whole bunch of units. Whether that becomes really commercial and really exciting, that's going to be the future, and I wish you luck. Uh, don't give up your day job. I'm out. Great business, think you need to finish your degree. Congratulations, it's a beautiful looking product. But for this deal, I'm out. Mm. Yep, thanks for the advice. Okay, one shark left. Um, what I like about you guys is uh, a number of things. Um, one, that you've actually proven record that you actually can run a business. I'm a dark chocolate eater. I mean, I do, I do like it and I understand the benefits of it and you know, certainly the French live a lot longer because of their dark chocolate. The, um, I've expressed today some concerns. You cannot make health claims. Full stop. Like, stop it. But that can be overcome. So I do like it. I do like it. I think we can get across all of that. And I, I would need to get some, some science behind it. So I like it. I really like it. I'd really like to do a deal. Really? Raf is actually co-host of the number one health and fitness podcast in Australia. Raf's essentially got 70,000 loyal listeners, and as soon as he drops this on the podcast, straight away we're going to have a huge demand for chocolate. Do you want to have another piece to make a decision, or...? The only way you've got three successful gyms is because you put your heart and soul in it. And by you having a split focus, that is a fundamental flaw in this being a success. I'm out. Cool. Thanks Good luck much. to you guys. 
It's a great Thank looking you. package, by the way. way. Yeah, Thanks very much, Thank you. Cheers, Thanks a lot. You're on your way. Well, why is it the fact you, you like the French eat dark chocolate? They don't like when they eat like duck fat and other bits and pieces. I do. Like that. The French tart's amazing. You yeah, do not. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> So, will this Melbourne couple be able to get the Sharks to see that their business is ready to be a household name? You, a bit there you, go. Thank you. you need some help. <laughs> we are so excited to be going to the Shark Tank today because it's the opportunity of a lifetime. Be great. Thank you. For us to get investment, it would mean the world. It would mean taking something that we are so passionate about around Australia and to other people. Hi Sharks, my name's Andy. And I'm Jasmine. And we're the creators of The Pole Room. Today, we're asking for $100,000 for a 15% share of equity in our company. The Pole Room is a manifestation of our belief that exercise should always be fun. So we've developed a pole dancing for fitness program that can take anybody of any age, of any past experience. Sharks, with your investment of $100,000, we plan to take our pole dancing for fitness program online and franchise our operations across Australia. The Pole Room is ready to put the health and fitness industry into a spin. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, very nice. Wow, that core strength. Great core strength. That's impressive. Very good. <laughs> so that was Andy and Jasmine. Correct. And you're looking 15% for $100,000. So you're valuing it around 660. Is that right? That's correct. Correct. Yeah. Who wants to give it a go? <clears throat> I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping with the right foot, what you're going to do is you're going to come around, you're going to bring your knees together, and you're going to spin around. Yeah! Oh, wow! <laughs> <Look for. laughs> okay, I'm not quite dressed for it. <laughs> well done. Well done. That deserves a $5 note. So where did you start, how did you start the business and how did you fund it? We actually started with a very small amount. I quit my job when I was 23. I was in retail and doing PT and I'd finally had enough and I decided to open a pole studio with $2,000. And I was very lucky to be gifted by an old student of mine, uh, $10,000, who believed very much in me. Wow. It's quite emotional thinking about it. Um, she, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> She's really unwell. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It's OK. She's... Take your time. <sighs> they say that all we need is one person to believe yeah. in us. It was everything. You're absolutely right. It was the difference between me going back into retail and me finding a small space. And I set up eight poles and I taught pretty much every class. <laughs> and within a, a few months, six months, Andy had quit his job and we moved into a 400 metre square factory. That's a fantastic piece of generosity. But uh, what's the earning capacity of investment into a pole dancing studio? So in 2015-16, our total revenue was 450,000. And so after everyone gets paid, yeah. and all the bills get paid, what's the bottom line? Yeah, so we profited $100,000. Very well done. I mean, nothing to be sneezed at there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jasmine, you've got $100,000 investment. Tell me about three years. What can I expect as an investor? In our three-year goal is to have 30 studios around Australia. At the moment, there are no national brands that are nationwide. There are only studios statewide. We would like to be the first. What is, uh, what is your franchise model? It's an owner-operator model. So we want our franchisees to come in and actually, you know, be at the front desk, you know, welcoming the students. You know, we want to build community in these studios. One of the major issues with, you know, whether it's yoga or Pilates or pole dancing is getting great talent. Yes. And you can't just replace it. Oh, hang on, they've left. Can you do it? Mm. <laughs> so how do you deal with that issue? Our staff are our business and we try to look after them as best as possible. But a lot of them come through the studio. We develop them ourselves. And so what's it cost to set up a studio, so to speak? We've calculated to be around 163000 To open one studio? To open a studio, correct. It's a lot of pole. Poles are quite expensive. Um, I'd like to at least think that I could participate in the businesses that I, get, uh, that I invest in. <laughs> Can't see yourself on a pole? <laughs> Can't quite see myself on a pole. All the best, I'm out. Thank you. 
Andy and Jasmine, I can tell you where I'm at. You know, it's interesting, but it's not exciting and scalable for me. Uh, I wish you well, but I'm not the right partner for you. But I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. It's in the wellness and health space, and you're putting a fun factor to it. What don't I like? It's a very early stage business. For that reason, I'm out. Totally fair. Thank you. Thanks. So three sharks are out. We've got two left. Jasmine and Andy, congratulations. Thank you. The thing that I do know about the fitness pace is it's a very cluttered market. Correct. And for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Thanks. You are very impressive. And there's, there's a few things that sort of cross my mind, because in actual fact, I go, oh, I'd like to do a deal with you, because I think we could work really well together. Um, there's a couple of things that I've got to sort of get some clarity around. The first one is getting um, a franchisee you've got a small pool. And the reason you've got a small pool is you need someone, one passionate about pole dancing, and to make money, they need to work in it. Yes. The second one is I have never seen uh, an industry so quickly growing of Pilates and, and yoga. And the reason that's an issue for you is because it's a land grab. Yes. And trying to find those great studios is really difficult at the moment. Do you know, we have a retention rate of 80%. It's pretty good. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, really? Really. There's no industry that has an 80% <laughs> retention rate in the exercise. None. That's why this is so great. Wow. Oh, come on, Janine, they're in Melbourne. <laughs> you look so good on the pole. Jasmine and her partner Andy have just pitched their idea to franchise their Melbourne-based pole dancing studio across the country. Do you know we have a retention rate of 80%? Pretty good. Very well done. I mean, nothing to be sneezed at there. There's no industry that has an 80% retention rate in the exercise. None. That's why this is so great. Wow. But despite impressing the sharks, Janine is the only one left who looks like she might do a deal. Oh, look, you know what my problem is? I know too much. I know too much about franchising. I know how hard it is. I think one of the things with our program that makes it sort of unique and would give us the opportunity to bring franchisees into the business is because once you complete a level, you can then go and teach it potentially. Yeah, but a good, a good pole dancer doesn't make a good business person. Or a good course, pole yeah. dancer doesn't make a good yeah. franchisee. So you've got to kind of get the combination. That's why the, the pool gets smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm sorry, I'm out. No problem. Ooh. I'll um, give you my email address oh. and come in and um, I'll talk about how you can actually franchise this well. You're wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. We used to live in Ringwood East and I, when I was reading your book, I was like, Janine used to live here. That's right, I did. <laughs> There's magic <laughs> in the water. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There is. All the best to you. Thank you so well much. Well done. Well done, ladies. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> how great was it? That someone believed in her. I know. That someone believed in her. She got the $10,000. And that woman didn't do it for the money. No, she, she did it because she was backing a winner. No, I just right. thought that was beautiful. Next into the tank is mechatronics engineering student Benny Tong. My dream since when I was a child was to be robots. The thing that fascinates me about robots is that it makes people's life better. We can change this part, or like you say, we move it out a little bit. Yep. My product has already changed my life. I believe that it can change many more people's lives and help them. My name is Benny Tong. I'm a student engineer from South Australia. I'm here today seeking for some great business advice and, if possible, $20,000 for 10% of my company, Bisong, which also includes our first invention and any products that we create in the future. So, 
What is a product? Our clock is a robot designed to wake up the user only without disturbing anyone around them. It does that by gently tapping them with a moving arm. <laughs> the R clock is actually the first of its kind in the world. <laughs> Given that R clock has the ability to wake the user with touch and or with sound, it actually can be more reliable than other alarm devices. R clock is also ideal for people who live as a couple and have different wake-up times, or for people who live in a share room or share house, or even help parents wake up their kids in the morning. <laughs> Do we have some brave sharks here today who would like to try for themselves? Here we go. Glenn's always looking for now, a nap. I just want to make sure I don't get my eye poked out. <laughs> no, to be honest, after five years of testing, it never happened. To just give that extra insurance to parents, we include a phone ball on the end. OK, so I don't get my eye knocked out. So where do you want me? In bed? No, no time, Glenn. Into bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we might never get him out. That's it, he's done. Pretending to be asleep. Oh! Oh! oh. Get up, Glenn! Get up, Glenn! <laughs> <laughs> So to stop it, all we need to do is just press the snooze button. OK, right. <laughs> Get up! Get up! <laughs> Could you pass me one of your little men? I mean, it's cute, but I couldn't think of anything worse than someone hitting me as I'm waking up. You couldn't sell it in America. Bill would shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question that we're all thinking? Is this just a horrible idea? Uh... Benny Tong has invented an alarm clock that wakes sleepers with a light tap. Oh. Get up, Glenn! Get up, Glenn! But the sharks aren't sure the product is commercially viable. Is this just a horrible idea? It actually does work, cos I actually use it for five years already. All right. I'm Steve. G'day, Benny. How are you going? Mate, what kind of look one as well, please? Can uh, you grab yes. me one? And what part of South Australia are you from, mate? From Mitchell Park. Oh, yeah, Mitchell Park. Nice. Yep. Yeah, lovely. Great. So, Benny, let's get serious about the clock. 50 bucks a clock, that's the retail price I noticed on your on the screen. Mm -hmm. What's it cost to make? Um, $15. So it's not a bad margin. Yeah. Have you sold any yet? We just put pre-orders on our website just yesterday. Benny, $20,000 is what your ask is for, yeah. for 10% of the company, so you yes. valued it at $200,000. Yes. The $20,000, what are you going to spend it on? Mostly on marketing. Yep. And partially for manufacturing. If I was asleep and I'm about to wake up and mm -hmm. it hits me in the eye, like, it, have you considered sort of I that? have considered that. Like, the angle that it's coming down actually can't hit you in the eye because if you put it right next to you, it will just hit you on the side. Unless you're facing it. You can't guarantee that because people move in their sleep understand. all the time. I, I could not think of a worse way to be woken up. Unless I wanted to play a joke on someone. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to belittle your, your work, right? There's a lot of effort's gone into this. You obviously believe there's a gap in the market. I don't believe there's a gap in this market for a generic sort of run in the mill, wake you up in the, in, in the morning type thing. But, you know, as a novelty, this is, this is amazing. This is, you know, just... I'm out, but please, mate, keep going. You're a smart bloke, and I really wish you all the best, eh? Thank you. You're so clever. I mean, whether this idea is a, a good idea or a bad idea, I mean, to even do it, it's very clever. Thank you. But my children are, like, massive. They're six foot three, four, five, right? They're huge. Yeah. And so they have big beds. Mm -hmm. So they, all they have to do is roll onto the other side and they wouldn't get woken up. Yes, exactly. I know there's um, these concerns, so we actually have extension. <laughs> so you can actually <laughs> extend it. Oh, you see? He's thought of everything. Shared income. <laughs> That's, that's gentle to wake up to, isn't it? Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> I know, I'm even coming at you. Sorry about my colleagues here. 
Look, I agree with Steve. I think you're, you're very clever and you've got millions of ideas. This is not the idea for me, though. Okay, no problem. I'm out. Thank you. Please tell us yes. you haven't put a lot of money into this. Um, no. Good. Good. <laughs> I love your guts and courage for coming here. I'm looking forward to seeing the next big idea, but this one I was never in, so I'm out. Yeah, no problems. Thank you. At this point, I see you as an ideas guy. I do wonder if maybe you'd like to license this to somebody else who's going to manufacture and deliver it so you can get on with the new ideas and you don't get distracted with running what would become a, an enterprise. The other thing is marketing is really quite expensive and $20,000 isn't going to do very much at all. As an investment, it's not really working for me. I understand. I'm out. Yeah, no Thanks. Problems. Thank you. Benny, you're a boffin. You're an ideas man. Really, this is a product and it's not yet a business. I think you've got to find someone to pop you up with so you can keep incubating those ideas. And I do have a friend in Queensland who sells more electronic gadgets into Harvey Normans and David Jones than anyone else in Australia. Happy to pass your name on, but quite simply, uh, I don't think we're anywhere near yet an investable position. So, I'm out, mate. I understand. Thank you so much for the offer. Well, well done, done you Benny. Very great. Thank you. Very Good luck. Man. Keep at it, bud. Thank Good you. you. Congratulations. Thank you you got to say, it's kind of cute. <laughs> well, it's amusing Steve, so that's obviously <laughs> worth something. <laughs> I know it's not a product for everybody, but I use it every day, so I know it actually works.